Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another GitLab CI tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can upload a file from GitLab CI to AWS S3. So let's get started. We're going to start in the AWS console, specifically in the S3 service. And the first thing we need to do is to create a bucket. I'm just going to give my bucket a name. And here underneath, you can select the region. Uh, whatever setting you have for the region, make sure you remember in which region you have created this bucket. The next step is to ensure that all public access is blocked. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a bucket. Now, if I go inside the bucket, I'll notice that it doesn't contain any objects. It's completely empty. The next step that we need to do in AWS is to configure some credentials in order to allow GitLab CI to upload files to this bucket that we had just created. For that, I'm opening again the AWS Management Console, going here to the security settings to the IAM. What I'm going to do here is to create a new user. If you already have a user that can upload files to your S3 bucket, of course, you don't need this but you need to have a user that has programmatic access. So I'm just gonna call this GitLab S3 so that I know why I created this user. The next step is selecting permissions and I'm gonna attach a very generous policy overall. So I'm gonna search for the S3 service and I'm just gonna give this user full access to all the entire S3, so to all the buckets that I have there. The next step can be left to default now the user creation is done. Now we're gonna do a few things next. We're gonna grab all these details that we have seen in AWS and we'll create three variables. We're gonna create a variable for the S3 bucket, we're gonna create a variable for the access key ID and also a variable for the secret access key. So inside GitLab CI for the project, I will go to settings, CI CD, and we'll select variables. Now the first variable that we'll define is s3 underscore bucket. This will hold the name of the bucket. You can name this variable as you like. Inside, I'm gonna put the name of my bucket. Make sure not to include any new lines or spaces. The next variable that we need to create must have a specific name. So the name of the variable needs to be aws underscore access underscore key underscore id. And for the value, I will go back to the AWS console, select the access key ID, put it inside here. And the next variable is AWS underscore secret underscore access underscore key. You'll find this in the video description so that you can easily copy paste them. Again, I'm gonna show here the secret access key. I'm gonna copy it, go back to GitLab CI, paste it. So now inside here, we have everything that we need gonna save these variables as they are. So let's start building the pipeline. If you're not already familiar with building pipelines in GitLab CI, I have multiple tutorials here on YouTube that guide you through the process of building multiple pipelines. And also if you want to learn overall more about CI CD, check the video description because I also have a GitLab CI course. Now let's get started with this pipeline. I'm gonna create here a new job. I'm gonna call it upload to S3. In this case, we'll have to use the AWS CLI. Now the CLI allows us to call the AWS API in order to, for example, upload a file. This is why we need somehow to install the AWS CLI. The way I like to do it is to use a Docker image that already has the AWS CLI included. Unfortunately, AWS doesn't provide an official Docker image. So for that reason, I have to use some Docker image provided by the community. But for me, it has worked so far. It is a very popular image, and this is what we're going to use here. So let's go ahead and define the image. We have two properties. One of them is name, and this is the name of the image. It will be Banst, and AWS CLI will be the name. So this is the author. And additionally, we need to specify an empty entry point. This will ensure that we can call the AWS CLI as we want to from GitLab CI, otherwise this will cause us some errors if we don't include this. Now in the script, we have to do the following. 
First of all, as you remember, we have to configure the region. Now the utility that we have from AWS CLI is called AWS. So we're gonna say configure set region US East one, because this is the region where I've created my bucket. If you have a different region, use whatever you have. It's also a good idea to include the region in a GitHub variable so that you don't have any hard-coded information in your pipeline. So what's the next step? Well, we want to upload a file. So for that reason, let's go ahead and create a file before we can actually upload something. I'm going to create a very simple file called foo.txt. And the next step is to use AWS S3. I'm going to use the copy command CP. I'm going to copy foo.txt to S3 colon slash slash. I'm going to use the variable S3 bucket because this is what we have defined inside AWS. And then we define the name that we want to use for the upload. I'm just going to use foo.txt because that is sufficient. Now what happens every time we run AWS configure or AWS S3, the CLI tool will pick up the two variables that we have defined, the AWS access key and the AWS secret key. And this is why they don't have to be specifically in the configuration. So the only one where you have the liberty to decide how you want to call it is S3 underscore bucket. So this is just the name I've selected. You can use anything you want and you can even leave it hard coded if you prefer. So let's commit this pipeline and see how it works. The execution of the pipeline only took 30 seconds. If you inspect what happened inside the job, you can notice that everything worked out without any errors and it says that the job succeeded. Jumping to AWS, we can take a look inside the bucket to see if anything has changed, if we can find our file inside there and you will see our foo.txt file with an empty size, it's an empty file. But if you would upload a file that contains something, it would of course contain your file. This is a very simple configuration and a very simple way on how you can upload files to AWS S3. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Check the video description for links to this configuration and this pipeline, to all the variables that I've used and some additional tips and tricks and debugging information if you're facing any errors. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below if you like this tutorial or if you have any questions or would like to see more tutorials with GitLab CI and AWS. And give this video a thumbs up if it helped you build a pipeline in your project and work with AWS S3. Guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time at another GitLab CI tutorial.